What is up, everyone? Antoine Wade here. Let's do this. Let's give it a minute so that people can join the chat. It is a fantastic Saturday. It is a hot Saturday. That's what it is. I'm located in Austin, and right now it is a hot 92 degrees. And yes, you don't want to be outside. Typically on a Saturday, me and my family find ourselves doing something, but Tomorrow, we actually have a soccer match to go to. So we said we were going to stay inside the house today. No spending money this Saturday. We had dinner last night. We were out in town. And uh, I said, no, we weren't going to do anything on Saturday. So I've been chilling in the house all day, handling some business, getting some work done. But Nader, what is up? How are you, man? I'm hoping you having a a good Saturday as well, man. Welcome to the chat. Welcome to the chat. We're going to have a uh, a good show for you guys today, man. We're going to have a good show for you guys today. And the whole purpose of me going live today is really to give some game. Um, something that you know I've recognized over my years of working in the professional world. Uh, there are some tips and some tricks that many people don't know about. And I'm having to, you know, explain a lot of this stuff to folks who um, who are just getting into this world and folks who are finally starting to see that they want to accelerate their career. And, um, yeah, it, it's 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 interesting. It's very interesting. I've been doing a lot of uh, coaching calls as of late. And, uh, you know, folks are asking, Anton, how are you able to get promoted so fast? How are you are you able to make this amount of money? How are you able to, um, you know, get past all the politics and things like that? And uh, that's the that's what I'm coaching people on. But for all of you who don't know me, let me just give you some credentials here. So I'm Antoine Wade, six figure earner, millionaire. Yes, I'm an asset millionaire, guys. Um, you know, I've been in the corporate world for over 15 years now, guys. And you know, um, I've worked for three companies in my entire life. I've been promoted on average every two and a half years. So if I've been in the professional world in about 15 years, a little over 15 years, I've been promoted basically uh, almost 10 times already. So I know a little bit about getting promoted. Uh, I've led teams in the United States. I've led teams uh, globally outside of the United States. I've lived outside of the United States. I also have an MBA uh, from a top 20 MBA program. So, you know, that's a little bit about myself. But, you know, a lot of you don't know who I am yet. And I, you know, if you're on this channel today, you know, welcome, welcome. And uh, uh, thank you for supporting me. But I'm also a father, guys. I am also a father to two beautiful kids. And I'm also a husband to a beautiful wife who puts up with a lot of my stuff, man. She does a fantastic job of putting up with me. Welcome to the chat, blind guy, his wife and their life, man. Thank you for joining the chat today. Um, you know, I, I, I think this is a, a very important topic today. And the reason why I say that is a lot of people are trying to get the bag now. And there's ways that many people are, you know, starting to share how they are able to do it in the entrepreneurship world. But I'm going to kind of give you guys the tips that you can do it in the world that you're currently in, whether that is in, you know, working for McDonald's, right? Whether that is in working in tech, whether that is in uh, working for yourself, whatever it is, right? There's something that you guys will be able to take from this conversation today uh, that I think that, um, you know, you can use starting today to improve your situation. So we all know that. Uh, when you're in a working environment that in a perfect world, it would be just about your performance. It would be, you know, about uh, the work that you do and how reliable you are. But in all actuality, that's not how things end up happening. Right. We, we want it to be based on merit. We want it to be based on how many you know keystrokes that we can you know type in a minute. We want it to be based on, you know, how. Uh, we've been able to close the biggest deal in the company's history. We wanted to be on all of that stuff, but the reality of it is that's not what it is. And I've learned that early on within my career, starting back to 
my uh, first role in a corporate uh, America. Um, I was having a conversation with uh, one of my managers at the time and had an opportunity to sit down with some directors and some VPs. And I was, man, I think I was around 22 years old. But they were, you know, talking about things that, you know, I probably shouldn't have heard. But the word visibility uh, kept coming up. Visibility, visibility, visibility. And um, I always wanted to know what that meant. And I found out what that meant. And visibility and how they were using it because they were talking about another uh, a co-worker who just had resigned. And they uh, he was basically asking for a promotion. And they never promoted him because he had a lack of visibility. Now, he, this guy was a star performer. He was an absolute star performer. But he had little visibility. And it was like, wow, what does visibility mean? In all essence, what does visibility mean? Visibility means this, guys. And and I'll tell you in 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 in, in this uh, uh, this live stream today, but visibility means this. It means, you know, to your senior level, upper level folks who uh, things really matter to, are you visible to them? Are you visible to them? Are you? Uh, are do they know who you are? That's what it means. Do they know how much you can contribute? Do they know what you're working on? That's what visibility means, guys. And, um, you know, I, I had to learn that. And once I, I learned that piece of it, because I was given the game quite early, I was able to get promoted, um, you know, over 10 times within my career. So let's do this. Let's do a, a sanity check. Um, you know, you guys are in the chat. If, if you're coming across this, if you're live, Go ahead, hit the head. Go ahead, and I can't even speak right now. Go ahead and hit the the like button. Uh, if, if this content is new to you and you're seeing it for the first time, and you like this sort of content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well. I want to make sure uh, that um, you know I'm getting the support and, and 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 you're helping with that and helping to grow this channel. But we're going to talk about uh, 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 how to get promoted and how to get promoted fast and. Uh, I've given you guys my credentials so I know what I'm talking about. I love to do that first, right, to set the tone on uh, what's important here and, and, and why I have the ability to talk about this sort of topic. But one thing I want you guys to all remember uh, about this is that perception, uh, perception uh, drives reality and perception is everything. And, you know, perception is something that uh, we can control. And this is part of the visibility piece of it as well. So I want you guys to keep that in the back of your mind as well, too. It is something that we can control. And there are behaviors uh, around perception that we are in control of. And what's up, brother? Be told. How are you? Uh, thank you for joining the chat, too, guys. So uh, thank you so much for joining the chat. I got you my chat over here. And I'm trying to make sure that I'm talking to you guys in the camera as well, too. So every time I get a chat, you know, I may look over here. There may be a bit of a pause and a bit of a distraction. But let me get back to it, though. Uh, perception is everything. And, 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 and here's the thing, right? Just like I am talking to you guys today in front of this camera, you guys are, you know, have some perception of me. And whatever that perception it is, I'm trying to control that as much as possible. And the way how you control uh, uh, perception uh, is, is, is by doing a couple things uh, about your behaviors that will allow people to uh, perceive you in certain lights. And we'll get into the intricacies of this after I talk over the high level pieces of it. But the controllable part of the perception in helping you to get promoted is how you dress. A lot of people don't understand that piece of it. I'm in here right now on a Saturday with a nice button up shirt and uh, my glasses on. And I'm just pretty, uh, what I would consider to be dressed intelligent, right? Um, and and, 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 and what, the way how I'm dressing today is pretty moderate, but it, it is intelligent. And it shows that I have what I would consider to be self-control, right? I'm dressing like I uh, am in a, um, a, a figure of authority to be able to talk about such a subject, right? We're talking about how to get promoted fast. And just imagine if I was dressed in a t-shirt with a ball cap on 
uh, backwards, right? Like I was a, a high school student, nobody would really take me serious, right? So a, a controllable behavior uh, for all of us when it comes down to perception is how you dress and you have to dress how you want to be perceived. So that's one tip that I have for you guys. The other piece of it that I would say is this. Um, there's a lot of do's and don'ts about the dressing, but I want you guys to go and do your own research on that. Uh, you have to dress for the position that you want, right? And I know a lot of us today, especially being in tech and so forth, we have the ability to work from home and then work remote. But there are times when you have to be on camera. And the past of how you used to dress, having to go to the office and so forth, if you want to get promoted, you still have to dress for the position that you want to be in, guys. That's, it's, that's very important. And I'm not going to get into the do's and don'ts of how not to dress, but, you know, you don't want to you know, be a VP walking around here dressing like Chris Brown. Right. Or, 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 or a plumber. Right. You don't want to be that person that's dressing like that. So, again, uh, part of the perception of, about yourself is, you know, uh, controllable and a, a controllable piece of that is how people perceive you based on how you dress. Another controllable behavior is how you communicate, guys. Right. It's important for you to be able to communicate with others and you know, a lot of us, a lot of us are getting very comfortable with the way how we communicate online and the way we communicate to our family members and to our boys and stuff like that. And you just have to really watch that if you're trying to get promoted in corporate America. You have to know how and know what things to say. You know, I, I have a nephew who was just at the house uh, maybe a week ago and we were playing Madden. I haven't played Madden in forever. Right. And, um, it, you know, one of the things that he kept saying, because he's a high schooler, right, he's like, He's like, man, I, I beat you, bro. And so so bro is such a easy word to pick up. And as a professional, right, I can say that to my nephew. Oh, man, like you suck, bro. Right. Like I can say that to my nephew, but it's not very you know, common to say that to a VP who has, you know, uh, powers, who is responsible for, you know, potentially you uh, moving on in your career. Right. So just be careful with how you communicate to other people. And when you communicate, try to be precise and concise as possible. Don't let your tongue, you know, words that you say back at home, uh, like bro and stuff like that, cuz and all that other stuff, uh, uh, really get into your professional talk. And yeah, um, you know, if, if, if you have a culture where it's like that, that's fine, right? I, I, I heard somebody the other day and uh, my company that I work for used the word OG. I'm like, God, man, this pop culture is starting to leak its way into corporate America. And I get it, man. I get it. And it's harder and harder every single day for us to use the right terminology when it comes down to communication. But, you know, you don't want to be talking to a CEO of a company using words like, you know, what's up, bro? What's up, cuz? You know, what's up, uh, a partner? You know, you don't want to do any of that sort of stuff. So, um, you know, you, you, you try to you mimic the behaviors of what you see as a professional and you communicate that way. So that's another controllable behavior, guys. So that's two that I've given you already how to communicate. Uh, and the other one is how to dress, man, and dress like you want to be perceived and dress and, and, and communicate like you want to be perceived as well, too. Let's uh, let, let's move on. Let me just jump over here to the, the chat. Um, uh, blind guy, I'm glad you're doing a deep dive into perception. I've always thought of visibility and perception from my own definition. Yeah. You know, and, and that's the thing, right, is we always think of it as from our own uh, definition. But we have to be re we have to remember that a lot of it is based on how others precede you. Right. And again, you're you're in full control of that. Think about this. Right. Think about some of the most powerful people in the world, right? They could be smucks behind the doors, but they could, they, they, they try to, you know, have, uh, create a perception about themselves to make them, you know, be, still be powerful, right? Um, uh, you know, you think about like the Warren Buffetts or you think about the Satya Nadellas who, who, who leads Microsoft. You think about, you know, uh, a gentleman of the past that or Tom Cotton. Coughlin, right? The the head coach for the Pittsburgh Steelers, if you want to get into the sports world, stuff like that, right? It, it's a it's, it's certain way that you want to be perceived and you are in control of that. And a lot of that has to do with your own behavior. So your uh, the way how you dress, the way how you communicate and so forth. Um, 
Let's also go over here to Renator. Renator says, uh, I have going outside. I hate going outside. Oh, uh, I'm going to struggle to interact with people. Well, Renator, if you want to get far in your career, you're going to have to interact with people. That's just what it is. It doesn't matter who you're working for. You're going to have to interact with people. And that's something that you're going to have to get used to, man. If you want to make uh, a large amount of money in your life, which I'm assuming you do because you are a uh, information systems major, right? And uh, well, part of being in the information systems world is understanding business and understanding technology and, and trying to use technology to solve people's problems, man. And if you are not able to, um, you know, talk to people, then you're not going to have a very successful career. So, you know, my pledge to you is to to work on it. Right. And, and, and yeah, you know, our personalities determines how we you know, interact with other people. But just remind yourself that if you want to get far in life, you have to work on the things that you're not good at. And, um, you know, if you're not good at working with people, you become better at working with people. Um, so another another piece of it. Right. Another behavior and another thing that we have control when it comes down to perception is how we interact with others. Um, I think this is a big one here, right? And a lot of it, a lot of us just don't know that our interaction with others really dis, our interaction with others really dictates how they perceive us as well. You know, I was at a winery on uh, Thursday and uh, was it Thursday? Or was it Friday? It was Thursday. Yes. My, my wife dragged me out of the house. We had the cleaners come to the house and we had to get out of the house, of course. And she said, we're going to a winery. Anyway, I'm sitting outside because I have a two hour phone call and inside the winery, my wife and kids are and they're making all kinds of noises. And, you know, there's music playing, playing and stuff like that. So I'm on my conference call. And one of the things uh, that I'm doing is I'm sitting in front of like where people enter and I'm smoking a cigar, by the way. I like cigars. One thing that you guys, uh, uh, if you guys ever get an opportunity to uh, meet me in person, um, uh, I smoke cigars and I drink wine. Yes, that's what I do on my weekends. That's what I do with my wife. That's what I do to enjoy myself. But, um, you know, I was sitting in, in, in front of the winery. And of course, you have patrons come into the winery. Right. And that inter there, there's an interaction. If I am not the business owner of this winery, I'm sitting in front of it because there's a place to sit. But people, you know, want to interact with you know, uh, 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 or, or the first time people see you, you know, they're going to get a some sort of interaction. So, you know, what I typically do and what I was doing was smiling. Right. Even though I was on the conference call with my earbuds in, you know, you, you smile, you, 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 you be friendly. Right. You you be comfortable in your own shoes. And that makes other people comfortable in their own shoes as well, too. So that's the same thing of interacting with your peers, you know, a uh, 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 be friendly. Uh, don't get too comfortable, but be comfortable, be yourself, uh, be curious, be professional. Right. And, you know, I would say be authentic as well, too, guys. Th those are, are are major pieces of how you are going to be perceived. So we talked about three things already. We talked about, you know, the the dressing and how you can actually control your the perception about you by what you wear, by what you sound like in your communication. And then this one that I just you know ran over is how you interact with other people. Uh, a simple smile goes a long way, guys. A simple smile can do wonders. A simple smile is something that opens people's minds about who you are and makes people curious about you themselves. Right. Um, and how you interact with your peers if you're working on a team is very, very important. And I want to give a, a shout out to Brother Keep It Techie. I appreciate you, brother. Thank you so much for coming through. And the super chat, man. Thank you so much. Salute, brother Antoine. Keep pushing the positive content to help the people. This is my brother right here, man. Uh, I did a show at Keep It Techie uh, uh, about a month ago when I was in Wisconsin. Oh, my God. Doing wonderful things on the Keep It Techie channel. Uh, guys, go and subscribe to him if you aren't subscribed. If you are in IT and you want to learn about uh, database management, you want to learn about you know Unix and Linux and uh, scripts and things like that, Go check out Brother Keep It Techie, a great dude that is doing wonderful things. I think Keep It Techie is in uh, Las Vegas, so he's in the, a hot city as well, too. Um, and uh, he's doing some wonderful things. I appreciate you, uh, Keep It Techie. Thank you so much for the super chat as well. Um, let's let's go back to the chat on here as well, too. Uh, uh, 
Jibran, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping I, I say your name the right way, but said I've struggled with dress and tech. I show up in a suit, lapo pin, pocket square, et cetera. Sometimes it was seen as dressing for the position I wanted, and sometimes it was seen as intimidating. Yeah, you know, and that's the thing, right? Um, that is the that that is very, very interesting that you said that, man. So let's let, let let's let's unpack that, right? If you show up in a suit, you know, tie, uh, a pin and so forth. Yes, you can show up for an interview like that, but you gotta, you gotta be able to read the, the company culture as well. Right. So let's just say this, right. Um, we're software engineers. You and me get hired to the same company, right? Of course, we're going to dress super, super dope, uh, for the interview. And we're going to be on our best behavior. We're going to be super sharp and, and positive and things like that. But then you get a, an opportunity to walk around and see the culture of the office. And, you know, one of the things about dress, which is, you know, interesting, is that you don't want to overdo it. Right. And, and I think a lot of the times if you see software engineers, you know, rocking T-shirts and sandals. Yeah, you don't have to rock T-shirts and sandals. But, you know, a lot of the times you kind of want to fit into somewhat of the crowd and, and, and being a software engineer you know, wearing a, a tie and a, a, a very, very nice, um, you know, a very nice uh, blazer every single day, uh, you know, that, that makes people question, you know, hey, you know, is, is he the boss? Who is he? And can I get to know you? And I know that sucks. Yeah, it absolutely sucks. But you have to be able to read the, um, you know, the, the environment that you're in as well, too, Javon. Um, you know, it's, it's no different than, you know, there's an all white party and you're showing up in, you know, all black. Right. It's kind of not following the, the rules. And although I know it's accepted, uh, you just got to be able to, you know, kind of follow the rules and and navigate that, you know, tightly. Yeah. You don't want to wear uh, sandals and flip flops and stuff like that. But you can you know still dress uh, pretty casual, uh, looking very nice without having the uh, dressing what I would consider to be a bit overboard. So just, you know, know the environment. And, and, and things like that. And, and tech, you're right. You're right. It's 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 you can miss sometimes on a lot of that, but th there shouldn't be a consistent miss unless, you know, obviously uh, 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 you're, you're trying to do that yourself. But what I would also say is this, guys, on top of interacting with your peers, um, you want to interact with your seniors as well, too. That's that's a big piece of it. You have to know how to interact with your, your seniors as well. And then, and and this is probably going to be the last one. Uh, before I dive a little bit deeper into the visibility piece of it, guys. And, and, and it's going to be very important. And I'm going to give you those three tips that I wanted to give you uh, that you can take away from this uh, video today, this live, live stream today on things that you can start to implement today. That's yeah, going to help you get promoted. So, um, you know, the, the interacting with the seniors is very, very important, guys. Uh, you want to be curious about who your senior leaders are. You want to be curious about what they like. You want to be curious about, um, you know, uh, 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 you want them to be curious about you. You want to be authentic around them. Uh, you want to be professional around those guys as well, too. And uh, me doing that, me, you know, following all of these behaviors have been able to, I've been able to create a perception about me that has you know, allowed me to be promoted to, uh, over over 10 times within my lifetime in a short of matter of time of, you know, 15 years. Uh, I'm at 37 right now. And I, you know, in, in my professional job outside of what I do for Black Heights and YouTube and my coaching business and, you know, real estate, uh, I, I command a salary that's over uh, $400,000 a year, guys. Right. So, um, you know, these are the tips that I've uh, and the behaviors that I've uh, used within my career. And this is what I coach. And this has, you know, allowed me to get to a salary of over four hundred thousand dollars a year in the corporate world. I never knew that this was even possible, guys. At one point in time, you know, I was just like many of you who were in college. If you're in college or if you're making forty thousand dollars a year, you're making sixty thousand dollars a year. You know, I never knew. I heard people like, oh, man, this guy makes five hundred thousand dollars a year, six hundred thousand dollars a year. I didn't think it was possible at one point in time until. You know, you start to uh, ascend up the corporate ladder and you start to say, OK, well, I'm making forty eight thousand dollars a year here. OK, I'm making 60. I'm making 80. I'm making 100. OK, what is it that I can do to make, you know, four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars a year? And you start to see that you have to get close to revenue, guys. 
And I know I'm on a small uh, tangent right now, but you have to get close to the revenue and you have to map out a career path that allows you to get close to revenue in the company. And the people that are close to revenue in any sort of company, whether you're working for yourself or you're working in a corporation, um, they are the people that uh, commands uh, a, a higher pay. And they are the people that are given higher pay, but they also have you know, a lot of responsibility as well, too. So, um, you know, that's 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 my point on that. So, you know, I say this right uh, uh, behaviors that you can control that, you know, remember this perception drives reality. You can control the perception by how you dress, how you communicate, right? How you interact with others, how you make them feel and how you interact with seniors. So let's jump into this now, guys. So let's jump into some of the tips that I want you guys to uh, to, to to put in your little toolbox. Put in your little toolbox, guys, um, because, you know, job performance itself, you know, being the best person to cook fries, being the best person to cook burgers, being the best person that codes, you're going to kill yourself if you're thinking that that's going to be what gets you promoted. That's not it. That is not it. Yes, it definitely does influence it. And you want to be a good performer because, you know, performance speaks for itself. But part of getting promoted has little to do with your performance. And let me just say that. I'll, I'll, I'll retract that. It has some to do with your performance, but the majority of it has everything to do with visibility. How visible are you to your senior leaders, your senior leaders, sorry, and the organization that you work for? How visible are you to your senior leaders in the organization that you work for? Yes, in a perfect world, your performance of flipping burgers and being the best person at fries and being the best coder and being the best project manager it will help. Uh, yes, and it should help. And with all the politics, that should be the only thing that we should care about. But the reality of it is that's not it, guys. So here are some tips that I want to give you guys that you can take away today that you can start using on Monday or tomorrow that's going to help you in your professional career to get promoted. And I want you guys to I, I really want you guys to, you know, write this down. Write this down. Many of you have already heard of it already, I'm sure. And you can leave me a chat and stuff like that on, on, on some of this. And you can give me some of your feedback on it as well, too, on what you think of what you've used to get promoted. Brother Gabe, I appreciate you, sir. Thank you so much for uh, the super chat, man. Uh, long time no see. I got to get you onto the show. I got to get you onto the show. I got to get you and keep you taking on the show. I got to do uh, more live streams. And I need to bring in. Uh, people in the tech space and, and and people who are doing some fantastic things to to show uh, that we have many people that are doing some wonderful things uh, across the world. And to be that example uh, of men that, um, you know, uh, others can follow. I, I say this. I wouldn't have been a a a real estate millionaire if I didn't have my uncle in my life. Right. And he wasn't a person that taught me the game. It was just the fact that I knew that he was a real estate millionaire. And all of a sudden, you know, this year I became a real estate millionaire after starting my investments in real estate in 2018. So we need people like myself, like to keep it techies, like there's many others like Brother Gabe's uh, that others can look at and say, man, these are normal dudes. But, you know, this is how they've done it. And, and, and we're the good thing about you know, us is that we're willing to share that and we have platforms to be able to do that now. So uh, that's what uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to get with you, Brother Gabe, and and, and keep it techy to bring you guys on the show. And and, and and I have a lot of collaborations that I want to do with some under, other wonderful people uh, in the game out here as well, too. Uh, BMT, Brother BMT, how are you, sir? Brother BMT. BMT is from South Carolina, I believe. Uh, uh, believe it or not, guys, I'm originally from Orangeburg, South Carolina. Uh, I, I spent the majority of my life in Wisconsin growing up. But I am from Orangeburg, South Carolina, and I have my uh, my youth years in that area. Uh, and, and I think BMT is from uh, some part of uh, uh, Charleston, if if I remember that right. Hey, hey, how you doing, brother BMT? Thank you for joining the chat, my man. Um, and Venator, uh, uh, yeah, you have to be good or you get fired. Yes, you're right. Absolutely. Your performance sucks. You're not going to you're not going to 
make any progress in your career at all. That's that's absolutely true. But let me get back to my points, guys. Let me get back to my points. Um, the tips that I want to leave you guys with is this. Number one is you want to be able to clearly communicate about the successes that you are having. And what do I mean by that? Because, you know, I did a show with Brother O'Shea today, by the way, that's going to drop on his channel pretty soon. Um, and, you know, I was talking about my first promotion as a software engineer to a senior software engineer. And I went from $48,000 a year to about, I don't know, I think it was like 54. I got a, a good significant bump in a matter of like a year or something like that. I think it was less than that. And one of the things that I, I did and I understood you know, right away after hearing this visibility talk is to clearly communicate my successes. So, you know, after I went to my manager at the time, my first manager, his name is Scott Zicker. Uh, I went to him and asked him what a, a, a senior software engineer does. Uh, what does he think a good software engineer does? And, you know, we, we, we kind of aligned on the objectives that I needed to accomplish in order for me to get a promotion. And I focused just on that. And I was documenting everything that I needed to document in order for me to prove that I was getting and having success. So, you know, part of this is clearly communicating about the successes that you had. So, you know, after I knew my objectives and I knew what I needed to accomplish, I needed to communicate that back to my senior leaders, which is Scott Zickert at this point in time. Let's just say I'm pushing myself back into the software engineer role. So every single time we had a meeting, a one on one, which was uh, 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 every other week. Right. I made sure that he knew where I was at on this project. Hey, you know what? I got these labels out and I got them on uh, out without there being an incident once it went into production. So I was delivering code that was you know, going into a customer's environment that compiled. Not only did it compile, it didn't cause an outage, right? So that goes towards my making sure that my uptime and my code is actually polished by 95%, right? So it's, 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 it's important for you to communicate your successes because if you don't communicate your successes, nobody else is going to communicate your successes uh, at all, right? So you have to be a person that really talks about the things that you do and the successes that you are having. Let other people know. Some people call it bragging, right? I don't call it bragging at all. It's just letting people know of the accomplishments that you are having, letting people know of the things that you did last week, letting people know about the things that you did last month. And believe it or not, they're going to start to talk about them, especially as a manager that's driving the perception, that's communicating, that is clearly communicating your successes. If you're going to do good things, and I say this all the time, right? If you're going to do good things, you know, tell people about the good things you do. A lot of times, you know, I, I hear it. I hear it all the time. Ah, you know, and I, 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 I've been a person that's been like this too, man. It's like you, you want people just to acknowledge the things that you do. But the reality of it is they do acknowledge it. But if you're not controlling that perception, they're, they're going to acknowledge it and not do much about it. So if you want people to know that you are the best salesman, you got to talk about you being the best salesman. If you want to know uh, people to know that you have hit your sales targets three years in a row, you got to talk about how you've hit your sales targets three years in a row. If you want people to know that you are the best project manager and all your projects come in on time and under budget, you have to clearly communicate that, you know, you are uh, uh, the best project manager and you, all your projects come in on time and, and on budget. So that's the, the the first tip, guys. And, you know, doing this, doing this is going to give you ammunition and going to tell people who you are. And it's also going to have people, you know, tell your story for you. So one is clearly communicate your successes, guys, clearly communicate your successes, because if you don't, no one else will. The second tip I'm going to give you guys is this. You know, we work in uh, team environments a lot. And I am, I am very, very big on this. I hate the attention, guys. I do hate the attention a lot of the times. Uh, you know, when people, you know, say, Antoine, how, how did you accomplish this? The first thing that comes to mind is we, we accomplished this. We accomplished this. So, you know, last year I made, um, uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, President's Club, uh, again, for the second time, right? Um, and, you know, during our sales kickoff of this year, we had to my account got nominated because we did such a wonderful job. 
uh, to really tell the story of how we were able to close such a big deal and uh, and all this other stuff. And, you know, I was the one that was responsible for the presentation. But you got to remember, sales, for the most part, is a team sport. You have, you know, people that's going to need, you're going to need from solution consultants to the professional services team to operations team and so forth, right? You're working for a big company. You're going to need a lot of people because you just can't do it all. And that's how I sell. I sell using others, putting people into positions where they are experts at and really allow them to tell their story or allow for me to tell the story so that companies can buy from us. And I make sure that we deliver what we say we're going to deliver. That's how I've been able to do it. But going back to this, 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 this story that I'm getting into is, you know, we had an opportunity to do a pre uh, 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 a pre-sales kickoff performance or a, 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 a presentation, right? So this is the presentation before the main presentation. You know, you have your executive team wanting to hear the story and make sure that it's hitting the notes that uh, uh, it needs to hit in order for people to learn something from, right? Because a lot of times if you're in sales and you do a wonderful job, it's good to share your uh, your successes with others so that there's something that they can potentially learn from and, and it just improves the world culture, improves the entire organization and things like that. So it's like a win story. That's what we call it. We call it a win story. So, um, you know, uh, you know, I, I get an opportunity to tell the story and the story had nothing to do with me. Right. And, you know, my 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 senior vice president, he's like, Antoine, so what did you do? I know you did it all, but what did you do? You don't have anything within this presentation talking about you. I'm like, well, I was really the facilitator for all of this, right? And he's like, no, but what, tell me, tell, 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 tell everybody, I want something that you've done the entire time. I know what you did, but you're not really explaining it. And for me, I'm like a humble guy who, I don't like the attention on me, guys. I don't like the attention on me at all. Um, you know, I, 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 I have a somewhat of an extroverted, introverted kind of combination of things going on. I don't like the, I, I don't, I don't like to brag. Right. And a lot of you feel like this as well, too. So I had to go back and think about all the stuff that I did and to add it to the presentation. And, um, you know, part of the things that, you know, I was able to add into the presentation was this, I was able to, you know, travel nonstop for a full month at the customer site, living in day in, day out. Right. Uh, to understand their processes, to understand the people, uh, you know, getting up at three o'clock in the morning because uh, my clients were in Europe and I wanted to make sure that I got up at a certain amount of time or a certain time in order for me to interact with them uh, to build that you know, core relationship. Um, you know, not only just going on site and, and waking up early in the morning, I flew to multiple countries, right, to get to know uh, just about all the executives. And I was away from my family for, you know, months on end, right? These are the things that I didn't have in the presentation that people really need to understand. So it is very, very important for you to specify your contributions. That's tip number two, guys. Specify your contributions. A lot of the times you're doing stuff as a team but people need to know what is it that you contributed to, to the success of the team. And you need to specify your contributions. And that's what I did in my story. Right. I told them about the number of times that I traveled, how many miles that I end up traveling, all the people that I met with, all the time that I was on site. Uh, those little things that I didn't think that was very important, but it ended up being super important in order for us to close the deal. So, again, guys, tip number two is to specify your contributions. So yes, you may be working in a team and they may do some wonderful things, but how is it that you contribute to the overall success of it? Had, was it that you made that extra call to that executive? Was it that you stayed up late to, uh, to make sure that a job was going to run and the customer uh, was happy about it? Specify how you were able to uh, to, to, to contribute to the overall team, not just we, right? Not just we. Think about you from an I perspective. And, and this is, you know, probably difficult for a lot of us because, you know, we see it as, um, you know, uh, we, we, we want to be leaders and we, we think it's about we, but you're going to have to really change that mentality and start to think I, I, I in those, some of those situations. Uh, so tip number one was clearly communicate your successes. Tip number two, is to specify your contributions. And I would say the last one, guys, is this. You know, 
Um, this is important when it comes down to getting promoted, guys. You have to do things that are outside of your norm. For example, uh, uh, as a software engineer, you know, everybody is going to be responsible for being on a project, doing the work that you need to get done and all this sort of stuff. And you do that well, right? You can do that just well. You can clearly communicate. You can specify your contributions, all this sort of stuff. But what else are you? is it that you're doing, right, outside of your day-to-day that just even puts a, a star above your head, right? What else is it that you're doing? Is it that you are, you know, part of the, marketing team and able to uh, add to uh, social media articles and all the United marketing, but, you know, are you able to, um, uh, 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 if there is a, 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 a talk or a conference, are you able to help with the setting up of the conference? Are you able to, you know, uh, uh, get involved in other committees within your organization where you can add uh, impact to part of the diversity and inclusion committee and things like that. So you really want to do stuff that is beyond your day to day outside of your normal job. It could be starting a YouTube channel and just sharing that you like to help to give back to people and them finding out about that. Right. You really have to be a person that does things outside of your day to day. Uh, and, and be able to communicate that. Typically, you want it to be more related to your job and how you're helping the company in different ways outside of your day-to-day job. Uh, but if there's ways that you're doing it outside of your company as well, that should shine a highlight, like the stuff that we're doing for Black Heights and you know the things that Keep It Techie does at BNT and and Gay Bay, uh, highlight that. That those are wonderful things that your company and the leaders in your company is going to want to hear and that you can share with them that will, you know, get you uh, and help you uh, promote it. So, guys, I, those are the three tips that I wanted to share with you today uh, on 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 ways that and tips that you can use to get promoted. Guys, is one clearly communicate your successes. Right? We don't we don't call it bragging over here. We 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 call it doing good things and talking about it. Right? What have you accomplished? What have you accomplished? And share that with other people because doing good things. People should hear about you doing good things, right? A lot of the times people always hear about things that you don't do. Well, tell them about the things that you do do and get comfortable doing so. Second is specify your contributions, right? We work in a team environment a lot of the times, especially in tech. Everything is about team, team, team. But as part of that team, what is it that you're doing to contribute and tell your story? And and what is it that you were able to do to get that deal over the hump? What is it that you were able to do to make that customer happy? How did you influence it yourself? So specify your personal contributions there, guys. And the last one that I would say that's very, very important as well, too, is to do stuff beside or beyond your day to day. Right. If you're an engineer. Uh, and, and you're helping out in diversity and inclusion of your engineer, you're helping out in marketing or your engineer, you're helping out in other areas or in IT, whatever organization that you're in, do things outside of that organization to help inside the company. And if it's not inside your company that you're currently working for, do it outside of the company if it's somewhat in a positive way so that others can see you and beyond uh, beyond as being an engineer. So, guys, th- that, that that's that's what I have for you guys today, man, is is a lot of the perception of us and of you can be controlled and it can be controlled in what you wear, how you communicate, uh, how you make others feel, how you make your executives feel. And part of being promoted is having visibility. You want to have visibility to your senior leaders and the people who are in power. And the way how you can have that visibility is to clearly communicate the successes that you have, you know, specify how you've been able to contribute and to do stuff beyond your day to day, guys. I um, those are those are, are, are tips that uh, I had for you today, and I, I I wanted to just make sure that I had an opportunity to uh, come live on 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 YouTube. This is a it's been a long time since I've been live, uh, and I wanted to you know make sure I had an opportunity to speak to you guys because this was on my mind. It was a uh, part of a coaching call that I had uh, a few days back, and I'm like, you know what? Instead of, you know, uh, uh, keeping this information in, I might as well share it with others as well, because this could be something that, you know, they can use uh, starting on Monday. So, gentlemen and ladies, 
uh, what questions do you guys have, man? And Mr. E, thank you so much for joining the chat. Looks like the chat was was popping. Uh, uh, Gibran says, a uh, 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 great customer service breaks cultural um, barriers. One of the best things is having foreign-based clients request you regardless of your rank. That is absolutely true. Brother Bito, what about other work cultures that pur uh, purposely do not promote the blacks there? Everyone make sure to hit the like button. Yes, I really, really would uh, appreciate you guys when you come into the chat. Uh, do me a favor. Uh, in, in, in order for me to grow to, you know, a a a, a good sized YouTuber, uh, I need to get the likes, right? I need to get subscribes. Um, you know, obviously we're small over here, and we want to grow. And this is content that you believe in. This is content that you think that's going to help others. Uh, uh, do your do your do your part. Do your part by um, sharing this video. Do your part by hitting the like button. Do your part by hitting the subscribe button. Um, you know, this is this is what's going to you know, keep me going. This is what's going to keep others going. This is what's going to allow people to see like, oh, you know what? I can get on YouTube and not just talk about entertainment. I can get on YouTube and learn something. I can get on YouTube and become part of a community that really wants to uh, push people to have success. I can be you know, part on YouTube and part of a community on YouTube that really is uh, what the I, I, ideal person that I want to be and see that, right? Uh, so yes, I, I really would appreciate if you guys hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, share the, the video, and I'll continue to come on here and uh, give you guys content like that. I'm gonna say this, right? I, I, I'm gonna say this, right? A lot of, uh, it seems like the chat was bumping. I really appreciate the super chats, guys. What questions do you guys have for me, man? That's what, you know, I'll, 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 I'll leave it open for uh, 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 another five minutes or so. If there's any questions that you guys have in the chat that you want to ask me about, whether it's a uh, uh, personal or professional, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm an open book. Uh, at least I'm getting comfortable with becoming an open book. Um, ask the questions, guys. And you know what I'll do is, as I become more comfortable with these live streams, my 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 goal is to really build a community that you know, we can just chop it up. And as I become more comfortable with these live streams, I want to hear from you guys. So I'm going to start to open the, you know, the live streams up so that you can tell your stories. And maybe what I'll do too as well is maybe I'll have uh, coaching calls on here as well too to to share, uh, you know, some of the challenges that people are, are having and, you know, uh, how they're able to, you know, develop actions and next steps in order for them to, you know, uh, get beyond that challenge, right? It could be even whatever else that they, whatever they're experiencing in their lives, uh, uh, I'm able to, you know, help coach and and, and, and to, um, you know, to help them do those challenges and problem solve and stuff like that. So, so, so yeah, um, guys, what, what questions do you have for me? Let's, let's see. Uh, Diaspora L, what's up? Thank you so much for coming in the chat. Said, hey, uh, I just, uh, just to add to your take on smiling, I worked for MIP and started up as a janitor. I moved up two positions because I smiled and was friendly over people who were probably more qualified than me. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, Joey. Yeah, it's it's insane how, like, I'm, I must say this, right? There's, I don't know, I think some water just came out of my nose or something like that. Could have been a boogie, but whatever. Um, here's the thing. I've, uh, I've been able to live all across the world. I've moved over 11 times. I've been promoted a lot. I've, I've moved a lot from my corporate job and I've lived, uh, you know, in Southeast Asia. I've lived in, you know, India for quite some time. I've spent a lot of time over the world and my father was a military service guy and I lived in, uh, in Sicily as well too. And, um, you know, when in, in the United States, we, we, we get ourselves in a bubble a lot of the times and we, 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 we think that other people's problems and other people's challenges, you know, are ours, right? And because that's all you hear about. Oh, my God, there's so much, you know, racism. There's so much uh, uh, problems. There's so much this and that. And it starts to influence and it starts to influence your mind. And it really, you know, you start to think that, you know, the world is, is really out to get you. But it, 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 once you start to, uh, you know, start to be in, become more in control over, you know, your own behaviors and things about perception, you're going to start to see that the world is a, it's different. It's a different place. And I think the majority of people in the world in general are good people. I, I can personally attest to that because I've been all over the world before, not all over the world, right? But I've been to, I've been uh, to my fair share of places. And 
I don't have bad experiences. There isn't a place that I would consider not going back to. Right. And that means that, you know, uh, yeah, there, there's challenges all over and there's things that happens. But I, I don't know of a place that I won't ever go back to. And a lot of that has to do with how I behave and how people perceive me. And a simple smile, a simple smile is universal to just about every culture in this world. Right. So you just smiling at, you know, people and just walking around with a pleasant face. You don't have to walk around and start cheesing and all this other stuff. Right. Like, you know, it could be creepy if you're not doing it authentically, authentically. But just a simple smile when you're walking in a park while you're, you know, outside and somebody's walking a dog like you don't need to see anything like this simple smile just goes a long way. And I learned that. Right. And, you know, that's that's what really uh, allows for opportunities to be created for you. Right. And, um, you know, I think there was a show a, 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 a few months ago um, on Kevin Samuels. I, I watch a lot of Kevin Samuels, guys. Uh, I do. Um, and there was a, a lady on there that talked about, you know, smiling. I just I, I just could not understand that piece of it, guys. I, I could not understand it. Right. If if you get upset with somebody asking you to smile, um, then that there is a problem. There is there is really a problem. I think there needs to be uh, some sort of um, uh, a help that needs to be uh, there because smiling is something that babies do. Smiling is something that, you know, happy people do. Smiling uh, is is the universal sign that I'm OK. Right. So when you don't smile, that means you're not OK. And smiling just does its wonders. Uh, to other people and opens the door for opportunities for you guys. And I learned that and uh, I've been able to, you know, have the success that I've had in life by, you know, having that positive mindset and by smiling guys, right. And having a pleasant face and, uh, and so forth. So Joe, you're absolutely right, man. Like it, it, it does wonders. And uh, thank you for sharing that story, my man. I really appreciate that. Um, you know, I swear, what are your insights on earning a degree in blockchain development or management uh, versus online certification university based on non-traditional new age private base? Oh, that's a really, really interesting question. What are your insights on earning a degree in, in blockchain development or management versus an online certification? Um, I would say this, uh, uh, Diaspora L. My insights or, or my thoughts on earning a blockchain development degree, uh, anything around that. Now, on the management side, I think management might be too general, but if it's something that is in a combination of blockchain as well as management, that is absolutely perfect. You think about it today, right? Uh, blockchain is, is very, very important. I am a huge fan of uh, the blockchain Tezos. Uh, 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 the um, Tezos is is a blockchain that is a proof of stake blockchain that uh, is really they at one point in time, it was supposed to be a very big competitor to Ethereum. And you guys know how Ethereum is is, is massive and probably one of the largest blockchains that exists out there. But anyway, Tezos is uh, very similar to a, 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 a Ethereum, except the fact that it's proof of stake versus proof of work. And with it being proof of stake, um, one of the things that I decided to invest in it is because it can be a private blockchain or it can be more of a decentralized, you know, public blockchain. But one of the things that I love about Tezos is the fact that, you know, when you invest into a Tezos, uh, a Tezzy uh, coin, uh, XTZ, uh, that you actually earn interest on that. So uh, part of my, um, you know, recent investments was about thirty thousand dollars in Tezos. I uh, bought uh, a ton of coins at uh, a little over three dollars and today it's over five dollars and I think 13 cents. Right. And uh, I earned close to about, uh, I would say, roughly seventy four dollars a week uh, on interest. Uh, just that coin close to two hundred something dollars, a, a, a little over two hundred dollars a month uh, just from investing into blockchains like that. So blockchain is the future. Uh, what I'm saying is uh, uh, the Diaspora L, I believe in it. Uh, it's starting to do some fantastic things. It has a lot of use cases. Invest in those that uh, do have uh, the use cases if you're going to financially invest in something. But overall, getting to the technology side from a degree perspective, I think that is absolutely fantastic. Uh, definitely go that way for sure. And an online certification, whether you you, you, you do a I, I think degrees are better because it gives you an opportunity to meet a lot of people and build those relationships. And at the end of the day, 
Relationships is what you know you need in order for you to have a lot of success in the world too. Uh, online certification is great, right? It really depends at the end of the day what what your financial situation looks like. Uh, but overall, I personally think that uh, go ahead and do the degree in a technology that is going to be uh, used uh, around the world and uh, is still being developed. Uh, I think that's a, a a safe bet for you in your career, man. Um, okay. Gay Bay or keep it take it, please chime in on your brief perspective as well. Yes, I would love to hear those guys to uh, 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 to give their thoughts on it too. Tamara Way, the energy you put off is the energy you reciprocate. Absolutely, Tam. Yeah, that's that's my sister right there. Thank you for joining the chat, sweetheart. I, I appreciate that. Uh, and yes, you're absolutely right. The energy you you put off is the energy that you get. I mean, like you think about it, right? Like if you know, I go to. Um, you know, the jam every once in a while. I, I've gotten I've gotten uh, uh, a bit overweight. Um, I think you guys probably know uh, or, or heard I may have said something, uh, but I tore my Achilles about nine, ten weeks ago. I had to have surgery. I was playing flag football with my boys, you know, getting a nice little workout in. And the weekend before Father's Day, I, I, I tore my Achilles, guys. Uh, one of the worst injuries ever. Um, and I can tell you this, you don't want to do it. It really put me in position uh, where uh, I felt that, um, you know, I, I, I was uh, uh, not a I don't I, let me let me let me try to use the right words here, guys. Um, man, it, it, it did something with my confidence as a man. You know, I had to learn how to shower by myself again. I had to learn how to uh, 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 to walk. Right. And um, I just don't. I, I don't recommend anybody uh, having an injury like this. Um, I, 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 I'm, I am well now, uh, but I also recommend if, you know, uh, uh, to, to make sure if you're going to get married or in a relationship, you have a partner uh, who can help you out <laughs> because I really depended on my wife over the last 10 weeks and she's been absolutely fantastic. Um, and, uh, I, I must say, you know, marriage is something that I am so, so, so pro on, uh, and, and I have reasons for that. And I'll share that in some other future, uh, some other future, uh, broadcast that we would do some other future live stream, but marriage is important guys. Uh, uh, I wouldn't be the guy who's looking to break barriers and to accomplish as much as I want to accomplish in my lifetime if I didn't have the support of, of my wife, guys. And that's just uh, the reality of it. Um, you know, yes, I, I, I was I was successful before I was married in my own little way. Uh, but I think I've tripled the amount of success that I had as an individual person uh, with my wife being by my side. Right. Um, it's important. Uh, and um, I think it's important for for you guys uh, to 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 have the success that you want. You have to you know, know what you what you want to do it for and who you want to do it for and so forth. And having a wife by your side who's supportive uh, can help you with that. So that's my whole point on that. Um, OK, uh, I, I lost track of what I was going to say. Uh, but, uh, let's see, let's see if anything else is in here. No, no, no. I'm going to go on through the chats guys. Oh my gosh. I feel like I'm all over the place right now. See, this is what happens. Yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 Stay filled and stay healthy. Yeah. That's what I was talking about. Um, so yes, I, I, I go to the gym and I, I, I went back to the gym after I tore my Achilles and one of the things that the ladies um, you know, they, they, they're at the front desk and just a smile just, you know, starts up a conversation. That was my whole point of this, right. Is, you know, a smiling and things like that. You know, they wanted to know oh, well, what happened and just imagine about to walk into that gym with the, you know, a, a don't with me face, right. Nobody wants to know what happened to you. Nobody wants to, you know, ask you, you know, what can they you know, help you with? I walked into this gym with a, a boot on. People are like, oh, my God, let me clear the way. Let me get you this weight. Can I bring you this? Can I, can I bring you this? Right. It's like, you know, smiling can go a long way, guys. That was the whole point of that long tangent that I was just on. <laughs> I got to laugh at myself for that. All right, guys. Well, um, you know, I, I, I blind guy, uh, his wife and their wife, the help made a serious business. Bro, bro, less. Absolutely. Absolutely. What do you recommend as a student majoring in MIS? And if you want to, uh, uh, to, to in the tech industry, what do I 
Um, you got you got to post that question for me again, Tanver, because I, I I got the question. I think what do you uh, I think you want to say recommend as a student majoring in MIS, and if I want to go into the tech industry. Well, um, I would say this as a, a student going into management information systems, you have a lot. Uh, uh, you will, first of all, one, you made a great career choice. Uh, that's important. And, you know, I think with having success in life, it's all starts early. And I say this, like, you know, picking a right, the right major for yourself is like, you know, we just had the Olympics and, um, you had the 100, 200 meter dash or sprints, whatever it is. And picking the right major is like a sprinting a sprinter coming out of the blocks fast. Right. It, it, it's a way how you can, you know, put yourself in a position to earn a higher salary and be in high demand and have a lot of opportunities in front of you. And I think MIS in general, you just going into that sort of uh, a major allows you to uh, gain a high level of business acumen and on the technical side of a technical acumen as well, too. And if you want to become more technical, you can explore that side with, you know, minors and just your own curiosity and things like that. But I think it's important. Uh, I, I think it's very, very important. And getting into the tech industry, it's the best place to be. You want to be in tech. If you want to make a, a, a lot of money in your career, stay in the tech industry, man. Stay in the tech industry. Healthcare is good as well, too. And, and, and information technology and healthcare systems is very good. But information technology and tech companies, I'm like, it's insane how much money that you're going to make as an IT manager and so forth, guys. Uh, I I just I, I did not not an experiment, but somewhat of an experiment just to test my value on the market because I've been working for my company for a little, quite some time and I don't plan on leaving. But, you know, I, as a coach, I want to see. And I want to stay up to date on the different types of interviews and questions and stuff like that. So I do myself out there most recently for uh, a, a role that, you know, was interesting. And uh, believe it or not, after three interviews, I was able to get a, you know, $140,000 offer. Right. I didn't accept it. But, you know, it, it's it's an industry that you can make a lot of money, guys. And I'm an MIS major. And I'm a person that. Um, uh, really can it, it help coach you to getting to a salary like that and sharing my knowledge on how you can get to a salary like that. So um, Kim Kafi, uh, I, I'm, I'm horrible at pronunciations, by the way, guys. So my apologies if I'm butchering your name. What are your thoughts on public speech and coaches? Uh, do you have any tips to improve one speech? Man, I, I feel like this. I am not the best. I, I'm a good speaker when I practice. But, you know, I have a, a, a heavy tongue and I have heavy lips, right? So uh, I think public speaking is very, very important in order for you to uh, climb the ladder as well, too. But it's not the fundamental parts. I think the tips that I've shared with you guys today is, is, is the behind the scenes, the things that you need to know that you can start to use today in order for you to get promoted. But public speaking in general, yes, you want to be able to do it as an MIS major or as any other major in college. You want to be able to get in front of people and to influence people. And part of that is how you communicate. And public speaking is what I'm doing now. Right. So, um, yes, do as much of it as possible. Uh, you can you know, work with a public speaking coach. That's very, very important. I've had one when I was in uh, my master's program. And, you know, one of the things that I've learned very early is how to deliver a presentation. Right. They tell them the the way how to do it is to you know tell the people what you're going to tell them, then tell them and then tell them again. Right. There is just ways and processes that you would take in order for you to deliver on a perfect presentation or uh, 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 how to communicate the correct way. So, yes, I do believe in public speaking coaches. I think they are helpful and uh, I would recommend one if you think you need one. So uh, IT manager or junior software engineer, man, you know who's going to make the most money? IT manager, man. Anytime you go into management, guys, that's another thing, too. That's another thing, too, guys. If you want to make money, get into management, get into management. Right. Like, uh, you know, an individual contributor is fantastic. You can make a lot of money. But, you know, in order for you to really start to grow your salary, you have to get into management. You have to get in leadership positions. You have to have a responsibility that demands more from you. Who do you think makes more? The IT manager is going to make more than a senior or a junior software engineer. Now, you know, um, it, it's just the reality of it. At, at most companies, that's the case. An IT manager is going to uh, uh, earn a higher salary and they're going to deal with more problems. 
So, it, you know, I, I, I that's where I would go. But, you know, if you're a person that doesn't like management and want to get into management, then, you know, junior software engineer or junior uh, engineer is, is just as fine as well. All right, guys, I've been on here for an hour already. It's uh, 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 my phone over here is blowing up. Um, and I really appreciate you guys for joining me on the chat today. I, 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 I this was random. I was like, you know what? I haven't been live in forever. Why don't I just get online right now and share, you know, a conversation that I had with uh, my client the other day about, uh, uh, you know, ways to get promoted. And I hope you guys have uh, really, um, you know, taken something away from this chat versus me, you know, uh, uh, you know, randomly babbling uh, <laughs> about my life. Uh, but let me do a quick recap, guys. I'll do a quick recap for you. So. Uh, let me remember what I was talking about. The, the the whole point of this presentation today in this live stream is how to get promoted and how to get promoted fast at work, right? And part of that is controlling the perception of yourself. And with perception, perception drives reality and your behaviors are is what is controllable. So we control our behaviors. We're responsible for our behaviors. And part of our behaviors is, you know, how we dress you know how we communicate uh, uh how we make other people feel how how we how do we make other people feel that's around us how do we make our seniors uh that's above us uh feel any other tips that i would say that's very important for you guys to take away is part of that perception is clearly communicating your successes right communicate the successes that you've had in the week in a month to your manager and clearly do that, right? You know, if you've you know, been able to, you know, close a deal and um, uh, 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 they weren't expecting it, uh, don't don't just do something good and not talk about it. You know, talk about it. Clearly communicate that to your manager. Clearly communicate that to your peers as well, too. The second tip that I would say is to specify your contributions, right? So talk about what it is that you did uh, if it's a team effort or, you know, really put yourself and shine the spotlight on yourself, tell a story about yourself. Um, you know, yes, a lot of the times the culture and companies is about we, but how is it that you contributed to the overall uh, success of that project? And how was it that you contributed to the overall success of that deal? And the last but not least, guys, uh, is to do stuff that is beyond your day to day. So things that are outside of your normal job duties, right? Things that are outside of the the work that you do if you're a software engineer or if you're an IT manager or if you're, you know, working at a cash as a cashier, right? Do things that are outside of your day to day uh, that can help, that can contribute, and people are going to recognize that. So, guys, I, I hope you have enjoyed this live stream. Uh, thank you so much for rocking with me. Hit that like button. That's that's the 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 cost of this free show today. Uh, I appreciate the super chats. I appreciate the comments, guys. Um, oh, Dizzle, man, thank you so much for it. Thank you so much for showing up, my man. I, I appreciate you. I, I really do appreciate you for the four ninety nine super chat. Thank you so much, Oh, Dizzle. Um, uh, glad to see you. You've been you've been a day one, Oh, Dizzle, and you comment on just about all of my uh, uh, videos too. You and Venator, man, thank you guys so much. Gay Bay, keep it techy. Look for an email for me sometime this week. I'll set something up, and coordinate with you guys. BMT, thank you so much for rocking with me as well. Guys, I, I, I appreciate all the questions. I appreciate the time that you've uh, uh, really um, you know, spent with me today. And as I said, I'm looking to build this community and make it uh, uh, very positive. And uh, I, I really appreciate the, um, the support that you guys have given me. Uh, I'm getting better at this day in, day out. And I'm going to continue to get better at it. And uh, before you know it, you know, uh, we'll be even bigger than we, what we are today. So until next time, y'all, you know how we do it. Peace.